so um, yeah, it's it's interesting. I think it's going to evolve in the yeah, next few great. months <laughs> because it, yeah. it really evolves rapidly. So we're going to see some improvements there and some radical changes with um, some thought leaders on Twitter becoming actually uh, established bloggers or or journalists. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, no, I agree. Most journalists do, they do tweet, so I, I completely agree, and I think, but it's, it's knowing, it's the credibility. I mean, we know that influence spreads the, through a, you know, there's a quite simple equation, and source credibility is absolutely key. So one way, you know, to, to get rid of rumors is to decredibilize the source. So, the, and the problem with unknown tweets is that you have, there have no source, source credibility. So, but once, as you say, once you get known journalists using this as an outlet, as a direct to consumer or a direct to world, you know, SMS to the world outlet. I think, you know, people, you know, there is going to be some potential in it, but you're never going to be able to string together uh, a PhD or a treaty or uh, any kind of ar argument um, on Twitter. It's going to be, they're going to be updates, it's going to be news headlines. And you see most of the stuff that journalists that I know do, it, they actually tweet what they're writing about in their blog where they can yeah. expand their, uh, their arguments. Yeah, that's the same way they're used by uh, newspapers um, in Italy. Uh, they actually write their post or their, their article on their blog, on their um, newspaper website, and then they just link it on, on Twitter with the headline. So, yeah, that's, it's kind of a, a great potential, actually, because uh, it's a way to getting access, free and easy access to news from other countries. I don't know if you know what's what's the view in the United States and, and in England about what's happening in Italy at the moment? With respect to what? The politics, for example. <laughs> 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 it's difficult. I'm not there. So I, I, far be it for me to judge um, your beloved leader. Um, uh, I think people have a wry smile. I think it's just... You know, America had George Bush. You guys have got Berlusconi. It's kind of things happen. I mean, I, I don't think I think uh, so. I, I wouldn't like to say. And I think you know what the people say. I mean, people say everything. And one thing you learn from from social media and Twitter is that people can say the most inane and stupid things, just as they can say the most brilliant things. So you have the full scale of things so but what social media can't do is give a kind of a balanced opinion about what the american population think about uh, the italian political uh, political scene if they think anything at all or very different depending on different uh, different communities that's just a way of getting out of answering your question <laughs> yeah i kind of noticed that but um yeah i was curious because uh, it's you know, in social psychology especially, you learn that uh, when you're inside a situation and inside a certain medium, you see it differently um, in, differently from what um, someone who's outside sees it. Yeah. So I was simply curious to, to hear your opinion about that, but you escaped my question, so I won't reformulate it <laughs> again. <laughs> Um, I don't offend anybody. Oh, don't worry. Uh, it's, it's a thing called the litmus test in interviews, isn't it? You should, before you say anything, you should put your litmus paper. You know, litmus paper. It kind of if it's out acid, it goes red. If it's alkaline, it goes blue, or the other way around. And you should, you should always do a litmus test before you say anything, because you're just, and it should come out neutral, either red or blue. Otherwise, you're just making life hard for yourself. I see. So one last question I would like to ask you is. Um, You've worked with um, several companies, big brands, and also with uh, Amnesty International, for example. Is that correct? With who, for example? Sorry, I had a glitch there. Amnesty. With... Yeah, I did some, did some work with Amnesty on, on online public relations. Okay, so I wondered, uh, what do you think about motivation when it comes to working with this kind of organization? Uh, that does some important work worldwide and working with a company that sells products. What do you think the motivation behind uh, is and if it's stronger in one case or another? I think it depends, it depends on the company. Um, I think people who work for uh, 
uh, NGOs um, and uh, political political groups and pressure groups, uh, whether it be Amnesty, Greenpeace, or, or, or environmental other environmental groups or whatever. I think they they have a cause, they have a vision, they have a vision of how the world should be, how it can be, um, and that's a great motivator. But I think great brands have that. Uh, I think Nike has that. I think Apple has that. I think you know. A IKEA has that, you know, we, we wants to bring design to the masses. I think having a vision, I think, is key because people are motivated by a vision and by goal uh, uh, and by a goal. And so I think the good brands can actually have a vision. They want to change the world. You know, there's the old, uh, um, you know, when Microsoft had its, um, uh, had a, a campaign that. Uh, was developed with say Microsoft changed the world or go home. It's kind of a little blue monster that started appearing a logo that uh, um, was done by a, by a, by a blog by Hugh and um, and it was incredibly successful because it it tapped into something I think is a fundamental human need is that you know why do you turn up to work every day you know you want to you know, change the world or go home and I think you know smart brands understand that and they realise the the importance of leadership and vision in coalescing motivation in an organization so they don't necessarily have to be different and I think on the other flip side is where there's something healthy about the involved in business that is sometimes not there in NGOs and that is you come up almost above opinions and point of views that either works or it doesn't. You either generate profit or it doesn't generate profit. It's why ultimately from a philosophical perspective I think capitalism wins because it's every, everybody's equal and it's you put your money in, you take your chance, you go for it and it's what you get back out of it. It's completely neutral to points of views and to ethics and, and it's completely amoral but that actually makes it for a much more dynamic culture and so I think some of the issues that uh, uh, is that makes sometimes it quite challenging in NGOs is the lack of the profit motive because the profit motive is a great leveling ground um, and it's a great way to judge whether something works or it doesn't work uh, rather than whether it's right or whether it's not right. You know, I recently uh, read a paper um, about um, how bringing you know, some kind of uh, uh, green technology to your company uh, actually uh, increases loyalty. Mm, when your yeah. customers know that you are green and you're, you really recycle and stuff, they actually are more loyal than other yeah. other brands' customers. Yeah, well, it's great. Uh, it's, it's, it manages your reputation. People want to work for companies that are good companies, and people want to buy from companies that are good companies. I think the challenge is to work out how much that is worth. Are customers prepared to pay a premium and if so how much for the good corporate citizenship um, and the environmental credentials that a company will invest in um, I think we've gone past the point of greenwash greenwash doesn't work people see beyond that but I think there's still a legitimate it's like okay so we can produce a computer that's completely mercury free for example but it's going to cost 10% more are people prepared to pay that and I think that's they might think better of the company but if they're not prepared to buy pay the premium for it then it's there's a real business issue about whether you should uh, invest in that and make your employees un uh, redundant um, by, by chasing a green halo yeah I, I think that that's another thing that is going to change in in time and in short times because um, technology in this field really has to evolve rapidly considering the yeah. energy uh, problems we face especially here in, in Europe and especially now with the nuclear plants uh, going yeah. down so um, I think that's going to be one one aspect that's going to change in the future and companies really have to um, get along with it, but anyhow, we'll we'll see what what's gonna happen in the future. And uh, I really thank you for your time. 
and I invite everyone to visit your uh, blog, socialcommercetoday.com, and your personal blog, uh, viralculture.com. And I hope we'll talk again soon. Yes, I certainly hope so, Maria. Thank you very well, thank much. Thank you very much for inviting me to talk. Thank you. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.